Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Joey Poo for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're here at Meadow Hall. Not too far for you to come, Mr. Dave Carwell? Home turf, home turf this is for me, so yeah. Uh, obviously with Hopi Price. Big fight for him, James B. Jr., really good step up. He's been in there with some top British level fighters, so just good to test the waters. I've always said that this year for Hopi, I want to fight guys that have been at that, at that level, championship level, maybe have um, been champions and lost titles and just to, you know just where they're on the little bit of a slide this year for that development and then next year we take the, the L plates off and then and then move on so this is a perfect fight for me uh, James's last fight was for the British and Commonwealth titles at featherweight this is hope his first fight at featherweight it's not a case of uh, stepping up to featherweight and having a little uh, eight rounder against somebody just you know run the mill and international now I wanted somebody that's just boxed for the British title British and Commonwealth titles against a very very good champion um, done rounds with him you know give you know not just folded in a round or two done rounds with him he's got experience um, experience at title level and that's that's what I want so it's a it's a perfect step up is it the sort of fight that is hard to come by because I was just speaking to Nico Levers and he's obviously a bit lower down on the pedigree right now but it's really hard for these kind of prospects on the cusp of titles to stand out from the rest at the minute yeah I, I just feel that you know, there's a, there's, there's a fine line between rushing your kids. Kid, you've got fighters that have got potential to go on to big things. Sometimes they just get rushed and they go from having the guys that don't try to win and just fold and just fall over to then all of a sudden being championship calibre opponents fighting for titles and they might get away with one or two but then they fight, they're stuck at that level and then the inexperience catches up on them rather than the ability. Um, and that's something I've always been on about with Hope. He, he's got the talent and the mentality to, to, to do a great job in this sport, unbelievable job in this sport. You know, um, he's for me, he he's going to be elite level. But I need the time to develop him, and it's not just development in the gym; it's development in the fights. You know, and we we had COVID. We had you know where they're only fighting a couple of times a year. I need activity and I need that progression in fights. And like I've said, James, it's not a case of, oh, you, you, just because he's got beat, you think you're picking him. No, it's because he, because of what he's done in these fights, fighting at this, at this level. It's a, it's a, um, an indication of my respect for him as an opponent, that I view him as a good opponent for Hope. Because I expect him to give Hope problems in the fight, and therefore Hope is going to absorb that experience that he's got and make him a better fighter. Toughest opponent yet, then? On paper. But hope he's been doing the work in the gym to make him not look like Listen, all I'm going to say is the kid's special. And, uh, you know, this for this fight, for the whole training since his last fight, um, he's, he's gone up levels. You know, we went out to America and he's sparring with good fighters in America. And it was, it was just a case of trying new things out. They're working, they're working, working. He's come back. He's hit the road, uh, hit the ground running. I'm expecting a career best performance, and then it'll be one of those where then people say, "Well, when's he going to step?" Probably Eddie. When's he going to step up? Well, these are step ups, you know. And, and sometimes you get in with people, and if you're a, if you're a special talent, when you step up with these people that are trying to win, you will look better. That's what we want. Excellent. I don't think we spoke to you since it was announced that you work with Ebony Bridges. Uh, a kind of an interesting addition to the stable for many fronts, but another world champion. I know a lot's been speaking about her being on the undercard of Anthony Joshua in August. Is that aligned with your thoughts? Whatever. I don't manage her. Um, I'm, I'm coaching her. Uh, she's, she's slotted into the gym. Fantastic. She's different to what I thought she was going to be. Um, she's very, very smart. I mean, I've, I've never really sport, so I've said I've said hello, and that's it. Um, so it was a little bit of a surprise for me as well when I got asked. Um, but she's, it's one of those where you just, you just gel with somebody straight away. She's very, very smart, intelligent, which helps working with me. Um, she gets what we're doing. She, you know, she buys into it straight away because she feels the difference. Um, 
and so she's she's getting some great work in and, and she's you know she's got a champion's mentality she's a grafter what a work ethic you know um but the banter and the stuff with the, with the guys in the gym, she just fit, she just fit in. She's like one of the lads. So yeah, it's 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 a great start so far. Time wise, fight wise, what, whatever you know, I don't know what's happening with this AJ date situation. If it gets put back, it gets put back. If it's on that date, it's on that date. I'm just training her to 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 fight basically. Have you spoke to her about potential opponents? I think it's a voluntary next, and then she wants that unification. Is that something you've spoken to her about? When, at this stage, we're not we're not at that stage yet. Um, when we know the date that she's fighting, hundred percent, then we can look at that. But nothing's nothing's confirmed yet. So, you know, we, it's, we're just a case of each day working in the gym and 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 you know, and working towards a performance on fight night, whenever that might be. You had a look at little look at the other champions. So Nina Hughes was out on the matchroom card the yeah, other night. I was, I was at that. I mean, listen, I, I think what Nina's done is fantastic. Um, but you know, it, it's that's not this fight. That's going to be down, you know, down the line. Um, the other champions the same, but a little look. That's not this fight. My priority is is what what I'm, you know, what we're working on, what we're trying to develop. You say it could be on that AJ card. There's a lot of uncertainty about it, as you said. Do you think we'll see that Dillian White fight? I don't know. And I, 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 without being rude, I don't really give a shit about the heavyweight division right now yeah. because when it's on fire, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. It's a great advert for the sport. But when it's misfiring, then it seems as though it's a bad advert for the sport because people look at the heavyweight division and, and judge the sport for that. All these guys here, they're all fighting, right? There's shows up and down. There's, there's shows on Sky. There's shows on on, on Channel Five. There's not, the, you know, there's, there's small old shows, non-TV shows. Everybody's going in there and fighting, right? Then you look at the, the, the world level. All these other champions are fighting. Fuck the heavyweight division if they don't want to get it on because all they're seeing it as business, right? I get it. They want to get paid 100% what the what you know what 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 they want to get paid. I get that. But you're only paid it if you're worth it. And if you're demanding figures that mean that fights aren't happening, that means that you're demanding too much and nobody's willing to pay it. So the fight's not going to happen. Or do you not want to fight them? Or... And I just feel as though when, it's, when, it's, when there's a cloud over the division, everybody pans boxing and you look at socials and everyone's talking about UFC and on the YouTubers and all this shit. It's not YouTube's fault that boxing's in the state it is. It's not UFC's fault that boxing in the state it is. It's boxing's fault, boxers' fault, promoters' fault because they can't get on with each other. You don't have to like each other to do business with each other, you know? But if it's if it's if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen and and I'll be excited when these fights get made. You know, uh, Fury Usyk, AJ Dillian, AJ Wilder, all these fights, I'll be so excited if they get made when they're made. But they're not being made right now, and so I can't give it, I, I can't give my time and energy to it because there's so many great Spence Crawford can't wait, you know. We've had we've had L uh, Lopez and Josh Taylor, brilliant fight, you know. You've got Sonny Edwards fighting, you've got wanting to fight absolutely anybody, you know. All these fighters that are taking the fights and, and wanting to make the fights and, and in these hot divisions, Garcia against Tank, people like that, they get beat, they get beat, they come back again. Right? It seems like the heavyweights, they're all right when they're dishing it out. When there's a bit of jeopardy that they're going to get hit back and they get, might get beat, then all of a sudden, oh, well, oh, this, all oh, that. Listen, out of all the divisions who keep getting brought back when they get beat, is the heavyweights. If you're a featherweight and you get beat for a title, good luck trying to get brought back by a promoter. You know, it's hard work. It's hard work. It really is. All of a sudden, they just want to move on to the next one. Right? But the heavyweight division, don't matter. So you're going to get another opportunity. You're going to get another shot. But, listen, you've got to look at, from their point of view, I get it and I understand they're doing what those best for. I've been saying with my fighters, I want my fighters to be looked after, to be in the best position they can be, um, paid the money that they want to get. Of course you want that if that's your fighter. But, in terms of me, because it's nothing to do with me, and I'm looking at what everybody's panning boxing for, look at the good shit that's going off in boxing, because there's so much good shit that's going off in boxing right now. Wow. Dave Cole will rant to epic proportions there on the heavyweight division. I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, people keep uh, people keep slagging my sport off that I love because they just love viewing the heavyweight division. Don't pin it. It's boxing's more than heavyweights. Like I said, when it's great, it's fantastic. 
but how often is it great in comparison to Fantastic right now? So look at the other divisions. Give them, give them the attention. Last one. Is Tony Belly making a comeback? He's put a tweet out on it. That's that's it. That's all. That's all I know. Belly Rosensky, Is it going to happen? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Very tight lit, very tight lit. Dave Colwell, thank you very much for being to IFL TV and uh, best of luck with Hopi on Saturday night. That's for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So, in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up.